Hello, welcome to another video. Whenever you come across a system of equations that looks like this, this video is just a template for solving it because I'm going to solve another one after this video that looks like this and I'm going to do the same thing or something almost um, exactly as what I'm going to show you. Remember that whenever you see x cubed plus y cubed, you must start thinking of the sum of two cubes and that's the strategy because in expanding the cube of a sum of a binomial or you factor the sum of two cubes or the difference of two cubes you're going to have this expression showing up and that's where you start suspecting that oh i know what's going to happen so without wasting much time let's get into the video The first thing we're going to do is try to factor this expression. What is the sum of two cubes? Well, we know the sum of two cubes has some special property which we don't see here. What about the cube of a binomial? So let's see. I think that's what I'm going to do. Recall that x plus y cubed is equal to x cubed plus so if you cube this, the next term is going to be, using Pascal's triangle, it's going to be 3x squared y. You see, I've reduced this by 1, and then I introduced y, plus 3xy squared, plus y cubed. Well, we can rewrite this by putting x cubed and y cubed together, so it looks like the first equation. So you have x cubed plus y cubed, done. And then this middle part, you can factor out anything that's common. And I can see that this is 3xy times what's common to what's left. You have x here, you have y here. And this is what you've got. Now, based on what we have seen from the original problem, x cubed plus y cubed is 7. So I can replace this with 7. And they've told us that xy times x plus y, which is what you have here, is negative 2. So this is 3 times negative 2. So clearly, the cube of x plus y is equal to 7 minus 6, which is equal to 1. So you come here, you go x plus y cubed is equal to 1. So what exactly is x plus y? Well, remember because this is a cube, there are three possible solutions. One real solution and two complex solutions. For the sake of this work, we're going to stick to the, the, only the real solution because we, we don't want to deal with um, um, the root of unity, the other uh, imaginary complex ones, that, rather. So here we're going to stick to 1. So, if we take the cube root of both sides, we're going to get 1, right? Remember, real solutions only for this example, or for this exercise. So we have x plus y is equal to 1, because the cube root of 1 is 1, the real root, okay? Now, x plus y equals 1, okay, we know that. But we need to find x itself, because there, there are infinitely many combinations of x and y that would give us 1, but there's a secret here. Look at this. If x plus y is 1, we can find x times y, right? So from the second equation, we know, we know that xy times x plus y is equal to negative 2. I can easily write negative 1 here, I mean write 1 here to represent x plus y, so that xy rather times 1 equals negative 2. Well, it shows that xy equals minus 2. So here is what we have. Let's make this equation 1 and let's make x plus y equals 1 equation 2. 
So we have a system of simpler equations that we can solve. What's the easiest way to do that? Well, well, you can do this mentally. Think of two numbers such that when you add them together, you'll get one. But when you multiply them together, you get minus two. It is, it's more like the exercise you do when you do factoring, okay, for quadratic equations or factoring of quadratic expressions. Now here we know what the answers are likely going to be, but let's just show how you get it. So in this case, I'm going to say from here, y equals 1 minus x from this equation. And I'm going to go to the first equation and plug in 1 minus x for y. So I know that x from this equation times y, which is 1 minus x, will be minus 2. If I distribute this, I'm going to have x minus x squared equals minus 2. So let's move everything over to the other side. We're going to have a 0 on the left, but on the right, this is going to become positive. This becomes negative. This stays negative, right? If we move everything over. So here, what we have left is going to be x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. x squared minus x minus 2 equals zero. Okay, so now this is where you have to answer the question. Tell me two numbers you'll multiply to get minus two, but their sum is minus one. You get it. So it's x squared minus two x minus plus x rather minus two equals zero. So this is the factored form of this. And when you factor, I mean, this is the expanded form. And when you factor it, you're going to have x minus two times x plus 1 equals 0. And this implies x is equal to 2 or minus 1. That way. So those are the two possible options, possible values of x. Don't forget, we said y is 1 minus x. So when x equals 2, when x equals 2, y equals 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Or, so we box this. Or, when x equals minus 1, y equals 1 minus minus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. Okay, so, or 2. So, as you can see, um, this boxing is terrible. x, y will be equal to the set of x is 2, y is minus 1, and x is minus 1, and y is 2. Because of the symmetric nature of the problem. Well, this is what you call a symmetric system of equations. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.